feels like it's been longer than two weeks since we've done this. It's Good morning. Busy. It's been a busy two weeks. It's been a busy two weeks, totally. <laughs> it's not like we've been just sitting around. Good morning. Welcome to my studio. Get the rest of my stuff taken care of while people show up. Good morning. I hope you've had a good weekend and a good Monday as well. I'm going to finish up my little blanket here really quick that I put together really fast before we started. So I can show a cute little uh, coordinating thing. So today we're talking about um, burp cloths, um, which uh, we have the pattern and we've used it in a couple of different kits. So sometimes when you've gotten kits, you may have gotten this pattern. Um, I'm going to put it together a little bit differently than the original pattern was. So I've sort of updated it, changed it, um, made it my own. If you're familiar <laughs> with the way that I sew it all by this point, you know that that's how I do it. I just change things up. Okay, so today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, terry cloth. So that's going to work for now. So I'm going to put that to the side. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but we're going to do these little burp cloths. So let me show you how they turn out. Um, again, I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the national educator for Shannon Fabrics. Um, and we have been, we missed last week, we did the little Pat the Penguin got um, put up on our Facebook page. And um, so for that kit, so if you missed it, you could go back and watch that one. That one was a pre-recorded one. Um, and we're back live today doing these. Uh, we'll be doing a giveaway at the end. So make sure that you tell us where you are from. I love to hear about your favorite quilt shops. So you can do that. Uh, if you were in one of my classes over this last four days. We did a little classes from Thursday to Sunday. Um, do a little extra high for me. Um, it was really fun to see so many faces um, that I've seen your names on the comments for the Sew Together Tuesdays and then to actually get to see people was really fun for me. So thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Um, so today we're doing the little burp cloth, which is this, just this little guy goes right over your shoulder. You little pat the baby. Um, so this one is made with Cuddle and with Terry. And this one is made with the Embrace and Terry, okay? Um, it works really well with the Terry cloth. So this is one of our substrates that we have that you probably don't see a whole lot of um, because it's really different than the Cuddle and the Embrace. So Terry cloth is a different thing that we make and we make a few different variations on that theme, okay? So today I'm gonna use um, just one of our regular Terry's. So I'm gonna move these. Make sure I've got the right ones. Okay, those are the two I was gonna talk about. I'll move that here. Okay, so we have um, a few different uh, levels of Terry, I guess is one way of saying it. So this one here is our 10 ounce Terry, which is just a real thin little Terry cloth. Okay, nice looped on both sides. This is our 16 ounce and you can see it's different. It's a, like a longer loop and it's a little bit softer. So this one is a nice one. It's the Terry on both sides. Okay. This is the 10 ounce. This is the 16 ounce. Okay. And you'll find both of these in a variety of colors. Um, one of the stores that I found this at or that carries it, I know, um, is Bittersweet Quilt Shop and they're in Pinconning, Michigan. And I taught there last year at some point. And so she's got some terry cloth and I know she's got it, I think in like pink and purple and blue. She's got a bunch of different colors as well as the white. Okay, and she's got that in some of the t uh, 10 and some of the 16. All right, so make sure you check that out. Um, there's other that we have. So we have just these regular terry cloths. Okay, and then, oh no, I think I'm missing one. I, oh, here it is. This is... I used it for a white cloth, so it's dirty on one side. But it's terry on one side, and then it's velour on the other. Okay, so this is our terry velour, which is beautiful for robes, which we're going to talk about um, in a couple of weeks. We're going to do robes. This is a great one for that. We also have this one, which is a waffle terry. Okay, so it's got the terry on the one side and the waffle cloth on the other. And then we actually just have waffle as well. Okay, so these are all in that segment of the uh, website that you can find out more about it if you go to our website. Uh, it works beautifully for all sorts of different things. The waffle, I use it for um, kitchen towels a lot. The waffle terry works as well for that. Um, and then we have all of these other ones. So today, were there any questions on that? Okay. Um, 
So Terry, one of the things about terry cloth is it's, <laughs> is it's messy too. Um, so it coordinates really well with our fabric because you're just going to make a mess with everything that you cut. Um, and I like that. So uh, that's what we're going to use today is the terry and the cuddle. So making it, we're going to do it the same way for either one. Whether we want to do it with the embrace, you could also do it with just like quilting cotton if you wanted to. You could do it with a flannel. Um, we're going to use the cuddle on one side for ours. Okay. So I have the two different um, weights of terry so this is the 10 and this is the 16 and you can see the difference just in how much body the 16 has compared to the 10 so the sample that i made here is with the 10 okay so that's the way this is and i'm going to make it today with the 16 just to see how different it turns out and if that gives it more body and i like that or if it gives it too much body and i don't Okay, so we're going to do a little experiment and see how it works out. All right. Okay. Um, and if you have questions, please leave them uh, in the comments. And Hawk, who just waved at you, will uh, give them over to me. He'll read them to me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about working with the, um, the Terry or any of the other fabrics. Okay. So what I've got here is I've got my piece of Terry. that was you washing any of this? Um, the Terry, I would pre-wash it if I were actually going to use it. I'm just making a sample, so I haven't pre-washed it. If I were making this to give to a baby, absolutely, I would pre-wash the Terry because Terry shrinks. Um, it always does. So make sure that you pre-wash that first. It also gets out any um, chemicals or whatever might be left over in it. But the cuddle isn't going to shrink at all because it's polyester. The Terry cloth is definitely going to shrink. So make sure that you wash that first. Good question. Excellent work. Okay. So um, this one just came out of the out of the terry cloth drawer, so it's a little bit wrinkly even. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so I've got a uh, a layer of cuddle and a layer layer of the terry cloth. Okay, I'm gonna put these together um, to do my pattern. When you get the pattern, it's gonna look basically like this. It's sort of a half size of what it is. So all I did is I traced this. I traced this side and then I turned it and traced this side from the other side. Um, what, an easy way of doing that is cutting this out, tracing around it, flipping it over, tracing it out. Okay. So that's what I did here. And sorry, it's going to have some shine. Um, but I just traced it out. It's okay. Okay. So I just traced it and then I made sure to write down here to cut one of cuddle and one of terry cloth. Okay. And then this is actually originally this was the size that you would do a half inch seam allowance, but I like this size. So we're going to use that tracing as the stitching line instead. I feel like this is um, more adequate for babies and their mess. So um, having had them, I remember how messy they are. So more more terry on my shoulder is better so i'm going to keep it this size okay so if you get a pattern and it's been in a different uh kit or anything it'll tell you to do a half inch seam allowance and we're not going to do that today so either way works the way i'm going to show you today is not adding that half inch okay you circle back around you said you made one with uh, the terry and the embrace mm -hmm. and does the embrace shrink do you want do you pre-wash it um the embrace won't really shrink very much it mostly what it does is crinkle so um yeah, so I don't, I don't pre-wash the tear or the um, the embrace. You can if you want to. You could just wash those together and make sure that they're both at the same like place of shrinkage. Um, but with the embrace, you're going to want to make sure that you iron it out flat again. Um, yeah, just because you're going to want it to be the same size as the terry. Okay. So yeah, and having done it with the embrace, I would do it. If I were to do this again, I would actually do the layer of white behind this just to add a little bit of oomph to the one layer of embrace. Um, so this is what I made. We'll just go off on little tangents, guys. So this is the little blanket that I made this morning that would be a cute little gift together, right? You can give the, the little burp cloth with the matchy little lovey. Super cute and easy to do. This center has the white behind it. So there's actually two layers of embrace in here, which I like better. It has a little bit more oomph. So if you can see, if I pitch this together, this is just one, one layer of embrace that I'm pinching together. This is the two layers of embrace. So you can see it definitely like thickens up when it has that other layer in there. And I kind of like that body that it has. I also like that it keeps the white really white. Okay. So this would be one that you could do with a different color embrace on the back or a terry cloth on the back too. All the terries come in a light color, but like this would be really cute if you got this little blue color and did a blue back on it. Super cute. I only just have white. Okay. 
All right, so I've made my pattern. I traced it out so that it's the full guy because I don't want to put it on the fold. So in the pattern, um, and a lot of patterns will tell you this, is to put it on the fold. So I would, you know, do it like this, put my pattern on there like this and cut around it. What happens is it's not very accurate. So then when I cut out my terry cloth, it's also thick. And if I trace around or I cut around it, it's not gonna be the same size as the cuddle. And I really want those two to be the exact same size. So the way that I do it, as I lay them out together, I've obviously done the big, the super fancy tape method <laughs> to laminate my pattern. Um, where I just use shipping tape basically and trace around it. Um, so I'm going to use my little magnets today to hold this down. Um, so I'm just going to put my pattern in place and I'm going to trace around it. Okay. So I'm just using my Sharpie. When I did this on the embrace, I used the Sharpie. And then when I went back, I made sure and sewed where I, like, so that the Sharpie was in the seam allowance. But on this one, this is going to be just the stitching line. Okay. So I'm going to trace all the way around it. Oops. Okay, and now when I sew these, these are going to be the same size because I've got the two fabrics together and they're just going to be sewn the same size before they're cut. All right, so the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little gap here. So I usually do three fingers gap is what I do. So I literally just put my fingers down on either side I mark it. Okay, that's going to be the gap that I leave for here. I'm going to leave that open. All right. That'll help me turn it inside out. If you want to leave it four fingers, you're welcome to leave it however big you need to. Just don't make it too tiny because then you end up having trouble um, turning it inside out and having it get sort of stuck. Um, not that I've ever done anything like that. Okay. So <laughs> we've got the pattern. We've got it traced. So this is where I do it a little bit tricky. So we talked about this when we did the uh, rustic horseshoe, when we did the little horse, we talked about the um, nostril and the eyelids and we sew them and then cut them out. And we do that on curves with cuddle because it makes it easier to handle. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I've got my pattern traced. So now I'm going to trace, I'm going to pin it and then I'm going to sew it and then I'm going to cut it. So I'm not going to cut this line before I sew it. It gives it some added stability while I'm sewing it. So it makes it a lot easier to sew these curves when I can bring that whole thing around and not try to get that stretchy little corner to curve around. Okay, when we're sewing it, you'll see how much easier it is to do it. So what I do is I go ahead and I pin around the outside of it through both layers. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to pin around the outside. Okay, and the reason I pin around the outside is because I'm going to stitch here on this black line. If I pin here, that means that all of this has room to move, and I don't want that to happen. I'm trying to give it some stability. So I'm going to pin on the outside of it so that this middle part where I'm sit stitching is totally going to be stable. All right. The other thing you want to make sure that you do is when you come under here, like I could feel my terry cloth was smaller because I just whacked out some pieces. Um, I want to make sure that they match, that I'm not going to sew off the edge. Okay. How are we doing with questions? Everybody okay out there? You have anything? Yeah, we're okay. Okay. Um, there was, oh, um, th there are questions about the magnets and the magnet board. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, it, they're from DIY style. There's the little... Uh, the information for you, it's from DIYstyle.net. Upside down. Yeah, upside down, so yeah. <laughs> but you can read it. Um, yeah, it's a magnetic cutting board system that I really like. Makes it a lot faster, so especially when I'm doing demos for you guys, I can sort of pop them out really fast. Um, I really like it. Uh, okay, so I've pinned all the way around it. Okay, so I hope that makes sense about why I pin it here and not here. Um, it really just holds it a lot more stable as I'm sewing. So now I'm going to sew it and I'm going to start at my gap. I'm going to sew down. So I'm going to do that same thing that I like to do where I sort of reinforce that corner. I'm going to sew down, around, and then back off this way. All right, so Hawk can come around. We'll set it up. I've got a 9014 stretch needle um, because the cuddle is the 
is the fabric that I have the needle for, okay? So um, the stretch needle will go through the terry cloth just fine, and I wanna use a stretch needle with the cuddle. If I don't, if I use a Microtex or a Universal, I'm gonna get skip stitches, and that's frustrating. So I'm gonna use the 9014 stretch. I've got my Mettler thread today, Metrocene. Um, I'm using a light gray is what I'm using today. You'll see it doesn't really show up, and so that's what I use for everything. You could absolutely match it and have just white thread in there, okay? I'm just lazy and don't like to change mine. Um, and then I'm sewing on the baby lock, and I'm just going to use a straight stitch. Okay, this guy has the digital dual feed, and so it's going to sew this just fine. Um, get that to go. Why is that? Oh, that's why in the wrong position. Um, so I'm just going to use a, a 2.5 stitch length with this. A lot of times when we're sewing cuddle, we do a three or three and a half or sometimes even a four. I'm going to do a smaller one because I need this to be um, secure and I need it to um, stitch closer together so we can do those corners nicely. All right, so I'm just going to sew forward and back and secure that little corner. So I'm just going to follow the lines that I drew. Okay. So I'm going to come up here, and then I'm just going to pivot, and I'm just going to follow that line all the way around. Okay, just keep, keep your eye on that line, and you can see I have this whole thing that I can do around this corner. So this is going to keep it so it's nice and stable as I go, all right? So you can see I have a lot more control over it than if I just had that little edge. Okay, so I can use all of this to control where my fabric is instead of just trying to hold this little edge to go under. Okay, and with the terry cloth on there, it lends a little bit of uh, a different stability to it and it sews really nicely. Okay, just flatten that out again. And we'll do another corner. Okay, and I'm just gonna, like I said, follow that line in the pattern. Some of the older patterns will say that you can use a half inch seam allowance, which you absolutely can. I just like the larger size of using this as my stitching line instead. Okay, and you can see this is so much easier than if I were trying to force that whole thing already cut out to go around these corners. Okay, so I find this is really helpful with lots of things and not just cuddle, um, but anything where it's a really like sort of, I don't know, a tight corner or on a fabric, fabric that is um, a little bit less stable. I don't want to run over that. Okay, make sure that this gets flat so I don't get any weird pinches in there. All right, and I'm gonna come back up to that little line. So you can see I drew a little line right here in between my, for my gap, and that helps for me as a visual reminder to not sew there. Okay, so I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna back stitch just a couple, give it some extra strength, and then I'll do the same thing and pivot and sew off. And I'm gonna sew off, you know, what's close to maybe a half an inch or so. Okay, and then I'm just gonna cut it. All right. So at this point, I've got the whole thing sewn, and now I'm going to cut it out. So it's kind of a little bit backwards and um, won't make as much <laughs> sense until you do it, probably. Um, oh, it seems... <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> like, wow. Good. Yeah. It's so much easier. So, like, especially because you have this curve going in and then back out and around, and um, it's like a little racetrack on here. Um, and it's so, so much easier. Okay, I feel like I did a little pun there with the SEW. It's so, so much easier. Um, <laughs> all right, so now once we've gotten the pattern on here, I've got it sewn through both sides. Now I'm just going to cut it out, and I'm totally just going, and this is with the gray thread, and you can see it doesn't really show. So, um, yeah, sometimes I make my thread match, but most of the time I don't. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut it, and I'm going to use my rotary cutter. I don't really care how um, perfect that is that I, um, if it's like perfectly a half an inch seam allowance, I don't really care if it's like a super accurate seam allowance all the way around. I want it to be fairly even, but it's not super important. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick a side and then go around. Okay, 
Okay, and I'm just going to keep moving this. Sorry, Hawk. We're just going to keep, okay. going to keep shifting. Gotcha. Okay. Because I want to be able to have a little bit more control over these curves as I'm cutting. You are more than welcome to um, use your scissors to do this too. I just sort of like the speed of the rotary cutter. Okay, but using the scissors is just fine too. Okay, and I'm holding the fabric over here with my other hand to kind of keep it in place so that when I push with the rotary cutter, it kind of keeps it, yeah, just in place a little better. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna come right up that side and I'm gonna cut into where I sewed so I'm gonna, I crossed over my little seams right there, but that's okay because the important part is right here. This little seam right here is just for me to help turn it. Okay. Okay. So there I got a little wonky part. I'm gonna go back over that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to carefully move this. So just like the cuddle, terry cloth can make a real mess. So I'm just going to carefully take this and throw it away. And then I'm going to grab my little vacuum. <laughs> Clean up my mess as I go what my mom always taught me and now I understand why um, <laughs> so uh, oh there they are um, so now at this point I have to clip these curves if I don't clip the curves they're not going to turn inside out nicely because a lot of times when we just use cuddle we can totally turn it and we don't have to clip the curves and it's fine but the terry cloth the way that the terry cloth is made it'll totally um, kind of like pucker at those corner at the curves and it won't lay very nicely all right so I'm going to um, clip some um, little V's into this and in the inside curve so this curve here we need it to spread open so I'm just going to clip in okay so I'm just going to clip some just straight in making sure that I don't clip my thread if you do the only thing you're going to do is just take it back there and stitch right over it again okay take a little bit bigger on these outer curves your mom heard that <laughs> That's my mom there. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> See, the lesson's finally stuck. <laughs> Clean up as you go. Now, if I would just learn to cut my thread tails as I went, it would be helpful. I remember my grandma telling me she was really good at that, and I'm not so good at it. Okay, so I'm just going to clip. So, so you can see these little V's are here okay the little straight lines are in this curve so because this one we want it to curve and come this direction so we need to give it some space to do that all right so I'm just gonna do a little bit on each side and then we'll clean up that mess later can, can okay. you tell about um, the vacuum cleaner you were using oh yeah it's just why a, it's such a good choice yeah so it's just a little black and decker I wish I knew what the name was does it have it written on there at all Nope, it's just a Black & Decker. The thing that I like about this, because <laughs> it takes a lot of stuff in there, but the great thing is, is that it blows air out the end, okay? A lot of um, your hand vax will blow it out the side, so if your air vents are here, when you're trying to clean up, it's just blowing air here. This one, I can clean it up and it's not gonna, it blows it all out this direction, so it works out just fine, okay? It's, um, you can find it at lots of different places. It's around 50 60 dollars i think for that vacuum cleaner um i've had mine for almost four years and it still works beautifully and i use it as you can tell all the time okay so i highly recommend having a vacuum cleaner just right at your table it makes it a lot easier um would it be possible to use pinking shears around this you could but it would create a whole lot more mess than i need to make so, and then cutting through both of these layers, because Cuddle and Terry are both um, a thicker fabric, it would probably be um, uncomfortable on my hand to, to get through that, because pinking shears are not the most easiest to use. Um, they're good for little things, and especially for doing cotton, but for the, uh, the Cuddle, not as much. I have tried to use the... Um, uh, the pinking blade so like they make a rotary cutter that has the pinking blade on it and that one works pretty well for getting a nice edge on it but it doesn't work so well for giving it um, turnability okay all right so I'm gonna do one more little clip 
Okay, and then I'm going to vacuum that again. All right. So now I've got it. You can see I've clipped all of my corners. So my big outside corners and then my inside corners, I just did the little snip in. Okay. Oh, I need to do one there too. Because this isn't going to turn right if I don't. So I'm going to do a couple little guys here and then we'll turn it inside out. Okay. So that's all we're going to do. All right. So then I'm just going to find... Um, I started a far end, and I do that when I do um, throws or anything else, is I try to find a far end, and then I bring it through. Okay. I'm just going to work it through. So you can see that was a fine size um, of a little gap there that it will come right through. Do, do, do. Shove it in. I'm going to save that, and then it's going to get stuck, and I'll be like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, but doing that little, um, I didn't really talk about that gap thing. You guys have probably seen it a lot if you've been <laughs> here before. Um, but basically, sewing those lines down the side to so that little L shape gives this a lot of strength. So I can actually pull on that pretty good, and it's not gonna it's not gonna tear or rip the fabric. I mean, I can I can really yank it, and it's fine. And it actually automatically sort of rolls the fabric into a seam allowance. Exactly. Too, right? So you can see how it wants to curve in, and that's if I pop it, I can stick that. Ta-da! It totally curves in where I want it to be. Okay. So I'm gonna pin that. So I can show you. So at that point, it's all just going to be nice and even. Okay. So that's super easy. I'm actually going to unpin and use my little point turner. So I've got this little tool from Clover. If I can find, there we go. There's the Clover logo. Okay. So this is a, like a little Hera marker. That's what this is. So um, this part right here works for all sorts of things. If you've ever used a Hera marker for uh, quilting lines, this is great. Um, and this is a nice point turner. I'm going to use this curve here to swoop around in here and make it pop out those edges okay so if I use the other end I'm more likely to stick it through especially through the terry cloth um, but this round corner you can see I just kind of swoop it and it totally pushes that out okay super nice and easy ta-da all right so there we go all pushed out this right here I can see there's a little bit of a pull and it's going to be okay, but if you get too much of this, the, the other thing that I could do, actually, see if I fix that, if that'll make a difference. If I can get it to, to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip another spot in here. Okay. Because it tends to pull a little bit. So if you are seeing that in yours, you just clip more. Okay. Get it to, get it to lay flat. If it pulls just a little bit, we could probably just top stitch that and it'd be all right. Oh yeah, that worked out better. Okay. All right. So now this will lay nice and flat as I go around here. But first I'm going to hand stitch this guy shut, which I had a thread. Oh, look at that. I'm so prepared today. So proud of myself. I only had two weeks to prepare, so <laughs> I better have everything here. Or I'll be in trouble. Okay, so I'm just going to knot this. I'm using the polyester thread, same as I did before. Um, you could use a double, um, like two threads if you wanted to, or just use one. I'm going to come under here, grab basically where it was already sewn together. I'm going to put my pin back in there. And then I'm just going to do a quick little uh, ladder stitch there. Okay, so I put it in my, um, the Terry side. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to take a little stitch, a little stitch. Okay, I'm not going to do this super tight. You can, but I'm also going to top stitch so it should hold together just fine. Okay, and I'm doing this with the gray thread, but you can't really see that it's gray because that's what our fabric does. Hides everything. Okay. I'll pull that. Got some little bits. Okay. Okay, so this is a ladder stitch if you're not familiar with um, hand stitches. This is the ladder stitch. There's another name for it. Maybe somebody will tell me what it is. I can't remember because I always call it a ladder. Um, but it works really well for closing these things up. I use it on the, the throws as well. 
and on the stuffed animals that we do. So you're planning stuff. on top stitching this. Yep. Is there a, 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 a reason to pre close this hole? Yes, because what happens is if I, wh what I've realized is because my top stitch is so small that if I don't sew this first, I get like a weird blub lump here. That's the technical term for it. Um, <laughs> when it like will sort of come out and I don't get it as nice and flat as I would like it to be. Okay, so it's just something that I've realized actually helps me get a nicer finish. Okay, on the Lux throws and stuff like that, a lot of times I'll do it after. This one I do it first because my top stitch is actually going to be like a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm just going to knot this. Okay, so I got it nice and tight and then I'm just going to put this in and I'm going to take the thread out over here. Okay, and that leaves the big long tail underneath in the fabric here. So it's in between the layers, so I'm not as likely to accidentally cut off my knot or to have it so short that it ends up working itself out. Okay, so just a little insider tip there. Somebody, somebody noticed that. My little pin cushion? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cute. It's a little pattern of mine. So it's called the circling geese. That's what it's called. Yeah, so it's a little pattern I did. It is on my website. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to clip all the way around this with my little wonder clips. So we've talked about the different size wonder clips. There are gigantic ones too. That's not what we want today. We want the little ones and we wanna make sure that when I'm doing this that I'm gonna sort of like kinda pinch it out to make sure that that, that seam is all the way out. Cause you know how kind of it wants to pull in sometimes and I'm not gonna um, take this to the iron or anything like that. I'm just going to be able to pinch it, work it out, and then clip it all the way around. Okay, so I'm actually going to clip it fairly close because what I'm trying to do with these clips is to hold that seam allowance nice and flat in there. Okay, so then as I'm stitching, I'm just going to um, pull them off as I go. So you can see here, it's really hard to tell where I did the hand stitching. And that's why I did that first, is because I can get it to hide once I'm doing this next part. Okay, so you can see these are every inch, inch and a half maybe. I do them really close. Um, and I've just found that it keeps my, my seam from shifting. Because if you've worked with cuddle very much, you know that it, the cuddle will move and the, the bottom side won't um, when we're doing two sides together. So you end up with that the top stitching where you end up with like sort of like poles in it where it has you know kind of done this sort of thing and it'll smush it down um, and it's not good so if I do really close bits here it's going to be able to hold it down a lot better as I go around just dump out some clips there thank goodness I have a bunch bought the box and not the little card the card's great there's like 10 in it but that box if you have it, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, I don't know, 50 or 100 or something. It's great. Also, you can see where I use this to um, <laughs> organize my pattern pieces. So that was for piece N. <laughs> I have piece J over here. It's not for this, this project. <laughs> but I've used them that way before. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a place to start. I'm going to start the same way that I did when I did the sewing, where I'm going to start at the top because I can make it come back around easily. It's easier to match the seam when I come back around if it's on a straight stretch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out a couple of my clips so that I'm going to start with pins. Okay, what I, why I want to do that is it'll fit under the foot better. Okay, and especially because I have the digital dual feed on there, um, it won't slide underneath there with the Wonder Clips. Okay, so if you show them the side of that, the digital dual feed, you can see how, how big that is and how far it goes back. So let's see if we can get it down. So if I, I have to keep my Wonder Clips out of here because they won't go past this. So I have to do pins enough that'll go underneath that. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? So if I have the pins in here, I can slide this underneath, okay, get it to fit. All right, so then I'm just going to start between two pins, make sure that that's falling down the back fine, it is, and I'm going to get my little stiletto, of course, 
Um, so at this point, I'm going to uh, change my stitch length to a three because I'm doing top stitching and I'm not holding it quite as tight. And so that way it'll go a little bit better. Okay, and I'm just gonna stitch all the way around really nice and carefully and using my little stiletto to guide it because now I have to stitch around those corners. Okay, so I'm gonna use my stiletto to help me get around that. Okay. Okay, and as I go, I'm sort of watching this line here. This is my quarter inch. And um, so I'm gonna try to keep an eye on that and aim this edge toward that. Okay. So on that circle, it's a little bit harder, but that's all I'm doing is aiming that toward the line. Okay. Who makes that stiletto? Oh, the stiletto is from By Annie. So she's the one who does all the, like the soft and stable and the bag patterns, all of that. I love this stiletto. It works so well. You can see I just have so much control when I use it. And um, yeah, I really like it. It has all sorts of great features. My favorite is that it's got a really nice long point, uh, which is great because I can hold it and manipulate things. It also has um, sandblasting on this long piece here, the metal, it's sandblasted. So it actually has some grip, which is great. So a lot of the other ones are just smooth and then they slide and this one has some grip so I can hold it better. So there's your, there's your by Annie commercial for the day. I really love it though. I really, yeah, I don't remember. I think I found it cause I was sewing her bags and then I was like, this is great. And then I realized it works really well for cuddle too tiny piecing, all sorts of things. Okay, so I'm just kind of doing this. This is the inside curve, then back out to the outside curve. So I'm gonna, so pull back just a little bit. So what was happening is as I'm sewing, this is starting to get all like kind of pushed up over here as I'm trying to get it straight. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this so it's over here. So when you're sewing cuddle, it's a really good idea to try to keep things as flat as possible. So I'm gonna bring this up here and then guide it through the machine, okay? I'm gonna try to get those little bits. You can see the terry cloth. There's like little bits of terry cloth that keep falling off. Okay, and I'm just gonna get those out because I don't want them to get shoved into my machine. Um, a couple of weeks ago when we did it and somebody asked me about my bobbin case and how messy it gets and I did a little video and showed that, but maybe I'll try to remember today and do that. Um, Cause we're trying to keep stuff out of there. So the more I can do that before it even gets there, the less mess I have in it. Okay. So you can see there's a lot of clips, but it is actually not too terrible to, to take them all out. And in the end, I have a much better result if I clip a bunch. Okay. I just keep an eye on this because I can see, because it's cuddle and terry, it's really easy to see the difference between them. And I'm just trying to make sure that that seam stays right on the edge. Okay. So now I'm coming around, have a little, little straight stretch. Definitely feels like a race course, like I'm in Mario Kart or something. I'm like, all right, I'm coming around the last corner. If I had that announcer voice, it'd be perfect. So I'm gonna take it nice and slow around this corner because I wanna make sure that it stays even and the faster I go, the more I'm likely to mess up. I'm gonna take it nice and slow until I get to the straight again, and then I can go faster. Oops, okay. Now I make sure I don't sew over my pins. It's a terrible idea. If you're still doing it, stop it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna eyeball this and aim for this line. So I'm not gonna focus as much on the line on my foot as I am on this where I started sewing because I want those to cross over. Okay, so I'm just gonna aim for that. I'm gonna cross over it, back stitch a couple of stitches. You can do that locking stitch if you have it too. And then I'll cut my thread. Okay. Ta-da! All right, so now, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna trim my thread. There it is. I'm gonna remind you that I'm a little nervous about our battery life. 
Oh, okay. Are we dying? I don't know. <laughs> I, can't for see it. I forgot to charge the phone overnight, so we may we may go. Um, but look at we're really close. Okay. <laughs> so I got the little the little bits off. I'm gonna turn it. Top stitching. Beautiful. I'm gonna get my little thread tail from where I started. What's going on with those scissors? Somebody asked about them earlier. Oh, these scissors are from Fomori. I really like these guys because they have a teeny tiny little, um, the blades are micro serrated. So they grab the cuddle really well because they have these teeny tiny little cuts in that or like shapes in them um, that help grab the fabric and pull it through the scissors, which makes it cut better. And I really like these because they have these nice big handles. So they're super comfy. Okay, so that's what these are and why I like them so much. They're, it makes it a lot easier to trim those little corners when I was doing those V's because they're easy to hold. If I was holding like little scissors like this, it would be harder. Okay, so there you go. Top stitched, beautiful, ready to go. I'm just ready for a grandbaby? No. Um, not yet. <laughs> if anybody has a baby to hold. Um, yeah, so that's how it totally works. Nice and absorbent, cute on the other side, okay? So this was one that I showed, like you could totally make yourself like a little, um, this is just the self-binding blanket that we do. We have a pattern for, has a cute little bib that goes with it, becomes a cute little gift that's super duper easy. Um, and honestly, I don't even know how long that took me, but not long, okay? All right, are there any other questions? Okay, Ellen, I need a winner. Give me a winner, Ellen. Okay, she'll give me one, she'll text. And we'll get a winner. So this week what you'll get is um, we'll give you fabric for, um, I'll let you pick a couple of them. We'll talk. Um, so I'll give you um, fabric, the terry cloth, and um, also the uh, cuddle. And I might just send you both. I want to see, what did I do? Okay. Oh, okay. I wish you guys could feel the difference. So I don't know if you guys can... You can see how different they are. This one is actually much heavier than this one. This was the 10 ounce and this is the 16 ounce. Um, you can see this kind of like doesn't hang as nicely. It doesn't have as much body because of it. This one has more body because it's a heavier weight, Terry. You can see the difference, right? Okay, yes. so that makes that makes a difference in what you what you've got. So this you could. That one's for big big burpers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this one is a nice and heavy one and yeah it's interesting the difference between them that's what I really wanted to see too so um let's see if we got that. okay so let me I wish we knew what the battery life was I'm gonna pop this thing open and see um see hi do you want to come look all right yep sorry I was just checking the battery I think we're I think we're all right okay so. if, if we if we go out you know what happened is my phone died okay um I'm gonna. I didn't mean to pop that off. We're showing yellow and not red. Oh, good. good. We we got minutes left, man. Okay, so I've got this cute little stubby uh, screwdriver. I can take this out. So I take my foot off. Took this little platform thing off. I'm sure it has a name. Sorry. And take my needle needle plate off. Okay. And you can see how not messy it is in there. Okay, so people worry a lot about sewing with cuddle and how much mess it makes. We got nothing, and I've made three projects in there. Okay, so honestly, if I put my little brush, what am I gonna get? There we go, there's a teeny little bit. Okay, teeny little bit of dust, that's it. All right, so if you clean your fabric first, you take care with it, vacuum it, all that good stuff, you're gonna be fine. Um, and then you should be cleaning it out regularly. All right, so don't don't forget to do that. There's, um, it's a really good habit to get into to clean it out, at least with every project. Let's see, there we go. Uh, Diana Bueller, Bueller from Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. Okay, so you'll be the winner. If you want to reach out to us, you can um, message us through the Facebook page. Okay, and just send a message and be like, hey, this is me, I won. And um, then I'll get back to you and we can talk about different fabrics to send you and I'll send you some terry cloth and some cuddle, maybe some embrace if you want it. Um, and you can try out your own and we'll send you the pattern as well. Um, Ellen should have posted, I'm sure she did, um, the link to the blog that has the pattern in it. Okay, so you can use the pattern. Make sure that you trace it out. That's really important is that you trace it out into the full. You'll have much better luck if you do it like this, okay? And then do the tracing and sewing it on the line. Um, next week we're back. I'm going to show you really quick. 
Where is it? So next week we're back, not next week, the week after that, the 14th, we're back. Oh, that's my mom's birthday. Yay. Um, <laughs> we'll be back again. And we're doing the puff quilt. Um, so can you see that okay on there? Um, super fun. So I've been experimenting to see how it's going to work. We'll be back. We're going to do a whole big quilt like this. Um, and I'll have some inside tips on that and how to make a cute little cuddle quilt. Um, with the puff square. So that'll be really fun. So we'll be back on the 14th to do that. Um, if you haven't joined our I Love Cuddle group, please do. We're there on Facebook and we're always showing off the things that we've made. I love it. It's a great way to connect with other people who really love this fabric and are making really fun things. Um, and if you make the projects from the Sew Together Tuesdays, you can post them there and we will all be really happy to see them. Uh, otherwise, you can subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on Instagram, all of that good stuff. Did I get it all? I think so. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us for Sew Together Tuesday. We'll be back on the 14th. So next week we're going to post a video about Pat, I believe. Um, but we'll be back live again on the 14th. Okay. So until then, happy sewing. Bye.